Well, you, you, you should have at least, what, one to two glasses a day for your heart, cardiovascular system? I, I think one glass a day is what's recommended. No, it is scriptural. No, no zeros I after thought it was that? a bottle. Might have been a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> you're, bring, you're bringing up scripture? Well, Paul said that a little bit of wine is good for you. Right. And then Jesus turned the water into wine. That's how good it was. That's right. Okay, where are we going from here now? Fifteen minutes after the hour, we're in the midst of getting a hold of well, Belinda I, Myers. I wanted to mention that if you do get our newsletter, that uh, Sharon well, did, on the line. did put a recipe for limoncello in the newsletter. So you can click on that and give you something to do for the weekend. If you have a bunch of lemons and, that need to be picked at home. And if uh, you're in a warm area, there's nothing better to drink on a warm day than a nice limoncello. It, it's just refreshing. What about it, lemonade? No, no. <laughs> no, not lemonade, Doesn't, limoncello. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's okay, got to be limoncello. So I'm going to ask Tiger now. Are we on Facebook now? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> we got we got the go-ahead. Yeah. We, we're on Facebook now. I I'm going to give that a, give that a look. <laughs> um, and we have Melinda here, I understand. Yeah, I, this is working out to be a pretty good show right now i feel right all right beautiful yeah, yeah. so far so good little yeah, a few little glitches in the very beginning okay with, uh, now on my facebook. facebook i see a picture of melinda with a snake around her neck Ooh. well that's good that was the last time that we had her uh no that was the last time not the last time it was a while back but but we had her um she wasn't in studio but she sent pictures and because, we posted them that day and we were talking to the people from the reptile oh that's group. right yes Okay, speaking of Melinda Myers, after the break, we're going to be speaking to our good friend, Melinda Myers. Any questions for us or Melinda, 855-424-9825. Also, John at GardenAmerica.com. Uh, here on BizTalk Radio, Facebook Live here in San Diego. Check us out on AM 1240 and today's replay in Los Angeles on AM 740. Brian Main, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. We're going to step aside and take a break. Coming right back with Melinda Myers. Stay with us. Mosquitoes can transmit deadly diseases, including Zika virus, West Nile virus, and dengue fever. Use Summit Mosquito Dunks to kill mosquitoes before they become disease-spreading pests. Just float an organic mosquito dunk in ponds, bird baths, rain barrels, and any standing water to kill mosquito larvae for 30 days or longer. Don't worry, mosquito dunks won't harm people, pets, fish, birds, or other wildlife. Mosquito dunks are available at fine garden centers and hardware stores. Having bug problems this season? Need an overall solution? Try Natural Guard Spinosad Soap. This combination of spinosad and fatty acids kills aphids, mealybugs, worms, caterpillars, and other bugs that plague your garden. It's also safe to use around your fruit and veggies to make sure you enjoy your crop and not those pesky critters. Find Natural Guard Spinosad Soap in a ready-to-use bottle or ready to spray for those large garden plots at your favorite independent garden center. Go to Fertilome.com for more information. I live alone and rarely have visitors. So when I slipped and fell in the kitchen last month and couldn't get to a phone, I knew I was in trouble. Help! I could barely move. Help! I tried calling for help, but no one could hear me. As I lay there, I couldn't help but think of my kids and grandkids having to go on without me. I was terrified. It took eight hours for my neighbor to find me. It could have been the end of me. That's when I knew I needed Life Alert. With just one press of this button, I'm connected to the Life Alert Center, where I can get the help I need, even when I cannot reach a phone. With Life Alert, I'm never alone. Call 1-800-414-1958 for your free Life Alert brochure. That's 1-800-414-1958. 1-800-414-1958. Call for your free Life Alert brochure today at 1-800-414-1958. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. 
Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-569-3414. That's 800-569-3414. Again, 800-569-3414. Do you have an old car sitting in your driveway? How would you like to learn a hassle-free way to get rid of it, help kids in need, and get a great tax donation in the process? It's real easy. One simple free call to our car donation hotline is all it takes. Call the Nishama Foundation at 800-721-6723, 800-721-6723. We'll come pick your car up for free and give you a tax donation for the full value of the car, running or not. The value of your unwanted car will go to help kids in need. It's fast and easy. Just call us and your car will be gone and on its way to helping children in 48 hours. And you get a nice tax deduction. Call the Nishama Foundation now to get rid of your car, help kids, and get a tax write-off. Call 800-721-6723, 800-721-6723, 800-721-6723. That's 800-721-6723. Biz Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Garden America Radio Show with Brian, John, and Tiger. The phone lines are open right now at 855-424-9825. That's 855-424-9825 or john at gardenamerica.com. Yes, the last thing you hear coming back into the program is john at gardenamerica.com, and that's a great place for questions. Also, uh, Facebook Live as we are back up and running. Facebook Live, John at GardenAmerica.com or 855-424-9825. And uh, Tiger, our guest is ready to go. We're going to do this thing. Let's do it now. Hey, all right. So this morning we're going to be talking with Melinda Myers, the wonderful The one and only. The one and only Melinda Myers. And, you know, we're just in time to talk with her about fall planting, fertilizing, and, you know, it's just wonderful information about all your gardening needs so if you're listening now and you have any questions between brian myself john and melinda it's pretty much guaranteed to get an answer you'll you'll get an answer yes so definitely if you have gardening questions call in now and we can get those answered for you or throw them on facebook live as well yeah yeah but for right now melinda good morning good morning thank you for joining us sorry for the difficulties last week Oh, I was beginning to think my bad technology karma was rubbing off on you guys. <laughs> oh no, it's not just on you. Don't worry. We have we, we had have a the brand same. new what, we had a brand new way of hooking up with a network, and there were a few things we thought we had ironed out, but uh, still a few wrinkles. So those were alleviated this yeah. past week. So thank you for your patience and being with us this morning, Melinda. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. You know, this time of year, uh, since I'm from Michigan, I kind of have an idea what Wisconsin's like this time of year. <laughs> And it's it's a whole different feeling, isn't it? You know, once Labor Day hits, um, things are still growing and you're harvesting, but in the back of your mind, you, you know, know what's coming. It's it's almost time to hunker down. Yep. It you bet. And the summer seems to go so fast. And you're right. We want to squeeze in those last chores or activities before that first snowfall. And one of those is transplanting. You know, we've got perennials that maybe have outgrown their spot or maybe they're not blooming like you want or they look like a donut dead in the center. <laughs> yep. Oh, no. And so this I've is seen a good those. time. Yeah. Par- Pardon me? I've seen those donuts. <laughs> they were in my yard, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so this is a good time of year to be transplanting some of those perennials, right? You know, especially because the soil's nice and warm, the air's starting to cool for many of us across the country. And so those plants are going to get reestablished quickly and get it. They still have plenty of time to root down and, and get settled and strong for the winter ahead. Now, are there any types of perennials that we should not be transplanting this time of year, or do you think most of them are okay? 
You know, the old saying is, if it blooms in the spring, transplant late summer, fall. If it blooms in the fall, transplant spring. Blooms in the summer, either spring or fall. But as gardeners, we all know we push the limits. And, you know, it, sometimes we just do it because we have time and we need to do it and we hope for the best. And usually if you give a good post-transplant care, those plants will do fine. But you're taking, you know, you give it a little bit of an edge if you transplant according to that old saying. Well, you know, the rest of that old saying that you uh, didn't add on was, and if it's dead, don't bother at all. <laughs> <laughs> or give it to that person you don't really like. <laughs> but you know you know that you, fucking, you bring up a funny thing because John loves to come in here with Brian and I, and he'll hand us this pot just full of a stick. And he'll hand it to Brian and be like, hey, it's dormant right now, but I, I think in a few months. And then Brian just babies it for a while, and then he comes back to John. Hey, it never leafed out. And John's like, well, I don't know what you did. You know? And, and so it's, it's, it's his way of keeping us in check and making sure we have failure in our life. You know, I think Tiger's making some of that up. I was going to say, the moral of the story is don't take gifts from John. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, or, or, like, or he just gives us an empty pot and it's just full of soil. He's like, oh, there's a bulb in there. No, It'll I, grow. To, Give it three weeks. Today I brought Brian a can of. <laughs> oh, it's got one leaf it on it. it does have one leaf. Yeah, uh, I, think, I, I think I could pull that out. I think you just took a cutting. Another one's going to be coming up, there. though. There's, there's one coming up on the other side <laughs> yeah. of that pot, right, John? Oh. Well, Brian yes, is ever that's hopeful. True. <laughs> Eventually. That's what John tells me. It's yeah. a. It was a. I don't know if you're familiar with the can of variety, um, Melinda called uh, Stuttgart. Which, no. Which is uh, green and white leaves. And. Oh, nice. Yeah, kind of a salmony flower, but the leaves are really, really pretty. And um, and Brian, I brought in a couple leaves for him uh, two weeks ago, and we were talking about it, and he said I'd really like to have one of those. So. So I was so nice enough to. You are. You're sharing. Yeah, I was nice enough to dig one up, things... bring it in, and and all I get is grief. <laughs> I didn't Try give you. I didn't give guy. you grief. <laughs> no, you didn't. That's true. <laughs> He's still trying that bulb that was not visible for the last two years. <laughs> hey, and then Melinda, but when you it... bring up. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Melinda. Melinda. Go ahead, Tiger. Okay. Well, I want to let Melinda go because I think she was going to say you bring up a good point. Yeah, I know. <laughs> go go ahead, Melinda. <laughs> Well, you bring up a good point about cannas. So for those of us in colder climates, we plant them either indoors to get them a head start so they bloom earlier, or plant them right in the garden after the danger of frost has passed. And then we don't get flowers till really late in the season, but the foliage is so beautiful. To me, sometimes even without the flowers, they look gorgeous, whether it's striped foliage or that mm -hmm. dark black of Tropicana canna that are a nice backdrop for your other flowers. So sometimes we, uh, flowers are overrated sometimes when the leaves can be just as impressive. That I is agree. That is true. And I mean, you know, in containers, people use them as backdrops, like you're saying, and it's just spectacular. It adds that uh, wonderful contrast in foliage and color. What I was going to ask also about transplanting, for us in Southern California, fall yeah. is the time for transplanting natives. So you know, this is the time when people begin to plant a lot of gardens because fall is the time for we have more mild weather in Southern California. Where you are also, do you guys have some natives that you guys also plant in the fall or not so much because you guys have such a severe winter? You know, you bring up a good point. And I think across the country, we're all feeling some break in the extreme heat. So that's why late summer and fall is a good time to transplant. Natives are very popular here. Um, many started from seed in the garden in the fall. And then those that are more cool season grasses and things that sprout earlier in the season, fall is a great time. But those, print, those prairie plants that really come into their great beauty at the end of the season, spring is a little better time if you're planting them from plugs or small transplants. When you say prairie plant, can you give me some examples? I'm sorry. Good point. Um, uh, little blue stem. Uh -huh. um, cone flowers are pretty tough and hardy as long as you go with the native. I've planted those any time during the growing season. Um, liatris or gay feather. Uh, rattlesnake master is a summer bloomer that's really great. A lot of pollinators love it. 
Um, it's really adaptable to a wide range of conditions. We also have the Rudbeckias, uh, the natives being better and more disease resistant than things like Goldstrom that has had some problems. Hey, Melinda, we've got to take a break. We're going to come right back. So hold those thoughts and come up with more thoughts if uh, need be. Also, those watching us live on Facebook, questions, comments, you can also hit John up at uh, GardenAmerica.com. That is John at GardenAmerica.com. Or float us a phone call, and Stephen will answer your phone, put you in line. That's 855-424-9825. Everything is coming up roses in San Diego from October 25th to 29th. Lance Walheim here, and I'm honored to be the keynote speaker at the National Convention of the American Rose Society. BioAdvance and Heirloom Roses will be co-sponsoring the 18th annual Save the Roses auction, along with the rose shows, speakers, and festivities of the American Rose Society. So join me at the San Diego Crown Plaza Hotel and Convention Center, and go to GardenAmerica.com and check the homepage for links to registration and event schedule. We paid less for our Craftmatic today than we did 20 years ago. If you're still searching for the perfect solution to a good night's sleep, call now for prices and free information on today's Craftmatic adjustable beds. And then decide when you see how little they cost. Rated number one by consumers nationwide on ConsumerAffairs.com. Craftmatic beds come in all mattress types, including cool gel memory foam for up to 50% less than today's leading memory foam brand. Enjoy temporary relief of low back pain, poor circulation, night time heartburn, mild arthritis. You'll sleep better in a Craftmatic adjustable bed. So if you're still searching for the perfect solution to a good night's sleep, call now for prices and information and then decide when you see how little they cost. Discover Craftmatic for less, up to 50% less than today's leading memory foam brand. Call 1-800-316-5271. That's 1-800-316-5271. 1-800-316-5271. 1-800-316-5271. Call now. We are perfectionists. We do it right and don't stop until the job is done. We build commercial zero-turn mowers with maneuverability, power, and comfort. Who are we? We are Kubota. Now, during our More Power to You sales event, you can get long-term financing as low as 0% APR on new commercial-grade Z700 series mowers. For more information or to find a participating dealer, go to Kubota.com. As a small business owner, there's one word that you absolutely dread, payroll. For small businesses, it's a big burden. You may think you're saving time and money doing it yourself. But come on, are you? Timesheets, processing checks, calculating taxes, a total waste of your time. Paychecks simplifies payroll processing, saving you time and money. Submit your payroll online, fax it in, or call your dedicated Paychecks payroll specialist. And you're done. Learn more at trypaychecks.com. Come on, do the math. The IRS dishes out 8 million penalties a year. Make one mistake and you're on the hook. On average, you're losing nearly one business day every month doing payroll. That's time and money you'll never get back, unless you get paychecks. More than half a million small businesses already do. Call 877-649-5324. Trade payroll pressure for peace of mind. Call now. 877-649-5324. That's 877-649-5324. This is an urgent health notice for all residents suffering from back, neck, knee, and wrist pain. You may qualify for a pain-relieving brace at little or no cost to you, but the deadline is fast approaching. Simply call the Health Alert Hotline now. You heard right. You may qualify for a pain-relieving back, neck, knee, or wrist brace. These items may even be covered by Medicare or your private insurance. The Health Alert Hotline is your brace company. These specialized braces have been tested for pain relief. Call us toll-free right now to determine your eligibility and to learn how to use your private insurance or Medicare to minimize your out-of-pocket cost. Don't wait. If the deadline passes, you may lose your opportunity to get a pain-relieving back, neck, knee, or wrist brace at little or no cost to you. 800-306-1760. 800-306-1760. 800-306-1760. That's 800-306-1760. Non-attorney paid spokesperson. Could your house go into foreclosure? Are you behind on your mortgage payments? Does it seem like the bank has no interest in helping you save your home and you feel like you have nowhere to turn for help? Then we have good news for you. Foreclosure Protection Services can help save your home as they specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. 
If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-563-0393. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-563-0393. 800-563-0393. That's 800-563-0393. Biz Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Garden America Radio Show with Brian, John, and Tiger. The phone lines are open right now at 855-424-9825. That's 855-424-9825 or john at gardenamerica.com. Yes, indeed. Back on this Saturday morning here, Melinda Myers is our guest. I'm Brian Main. 855-424-9825, john at gardenamerica.com, Facebook Live, questions, comments, and of course, Going into the break, uh, Tiger Melinda was in the middle of something. We want to pick that up where we left off. Yeah, she's yeah. talking about little gardens yeah. on the prairie. Little, <laughs> little <laughs> gardens <laughs> on the prairie. Or, I, th- I thought <laughs> we, we were talking about transplanting your fairy garden, Melinda. <laughs> no, no. But no, it's a lot easier than those big plants. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm all into fairy gardening because it's about a one foot square plot of land that you have to take care of. <laughs> None of the plants grow taller than three inches. I love it. Um, but but I was talking with John um, during the break about the prairie gardens that you were talking about or the prairie plantings that you were talking about. And when we were in England, we were at some properties where they had meadow style landscapes and and they had a lot of the same flowers in there. What would they call called long borders, long borders or borders? Well, those were more the meadow gardens at Great Dixter is what you're thinking. of. Well, right? yeah, but then also some of the rutabecchias and things they, they were in there border plantings well, some as of the, well, right? Some of the border plantings they had adapted from traditional English perennials mm-hmm. to a lot of the uh, more drought tolerant prairie type stuff that Melinda's talking about. Okay. And then but you and had we mentioned always joke that they've go ahead. taken our natives, bred them and sold them back to us. <laughs> now, well, they're, now they're trendy because they're popular in the UK. Well, you you mentioned something that I didn't realize too is that some of the native ones are more tolerant to things. You said disease tolerant, specifically um, with some of these plants, right? Oh, you bet. Um, suited to the native conditions. Now, granted, we've ruined the soil and our environment's different, <laughs> but generally, those prairie plants have good deep root systems, and so not only can they pull moisture from down deep, but they also help open up the soil so when we have record rainfall it helps that rain to go down into the soil and recharge our groundwater rather than washing off the soil surface and putting pressure on our storm sewers so they do a lot of good things and so when when people you know are planting this are they normally doing it from seed like you had mentioned or is this something there you had said plugs too but is this like they're going to the garden center and buying color packs of these items or or four inch plants you know good good question we're very lucky here in the midwest in terms of prairie plantings we have a lot of um we have a lot of companies that sell either transplants or seeds and it really depends on how large of an area you know if you live out in the country or in the suburbs you may be able to convert an acre or so and make that into a nice native prairie planting if you live in a municipal a smaller city or someplace like that you may be converting a garden bed into a natural planting or a rain garden. And what I think is nice is you can think of it as just as a garden using native plants if you have a small space. And, and I know you do that with your native plants as well. They're suited to the climate, more drought tolerant, more disease resistant. But if you're in a city, your neighbors may not appreciate that really natural look. <laughs> So having a garden bed or a border of maybe a foot of grass around the edge that you keep mown or um, maybe a birdhouse, just signs of civilization, (laughs) sometimes let your neighbors know, okay, it's not a neglected space. This is planned. It's a more natural garden area. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that is true because when we were were there visiting some of them, 
you you it was hard to draw the line between somebody that just left their garden unkept <laughs> and actually who oh, oh, that's the way it's supposed to yeah, be yeah or who was actually planning to do that kind of a thing um and it's always good to enlist your neighbors. I, when I lived in the city, I remember we were killing the grass, and we had more trees, uh, dwarf conifers, flowers in a bed setting, but it still made some of my neighbors a little nervous initially, and ours was more manicured <laughs> as a garden, but we still had to tell them, this is planned, <laughs> and they embraced it, and they started wandering through and enjoying it, but at first it made them nervous because there was no grass. I'm going to, you know, here in um, San Diego, we have a native plant society and they have little signs for when you have a habitat garden and you can put it in your yard and it and says, people know you know, this is a habitat by. garden. That's what I, I just put in mine, you know, just. And I just don't keep, take care of it. Just put it out there. Oh, this is a habitat garden. Don't worry. This is planned. But it's a vacant it's, lot. Yeah, right? but wait a minute. <laughs> that's that's not a native plant. That's a dandelion. <laughs> I have the upper part of my but... property has become a habitat garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But messy is good for our pollinators. So yeah. it helps those of us that are a little more casual with our, our upkeep of our garden. <laughs> We're helping the pollinators. You yeah. know, I don't know if um, it's because uh, I have let part of my property um, diminish to some degree. I was going to say unmanicured. <laughs> it was probably a nice way to put it. But when I go out in the back, the amount of butterflies, it's like I'm in a butterfly enclosure. They're just everywhere. It, <laughs> but but it all your leaves amazing. on your plants are eaten, too. <laughs> no, 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 they're not. They're not really. You know, having some leaf litter on the ground is good for your plants. It's a good mulch. It breaks down. It improves the soil. But it also provides habitat for ground nesting bees like butter. bumblebees love that. Mm -hmm. Some of our uh, moths uh, overwinter under that debris. So it's been part of their life cycle there. So you're really doing good things. And, and a lot of our weeds, unfortunately, are good for pollinators. <laughs> well, I, I think that's true. And I've noticed a lot of uh, songbirds, too, because yeah. if you let those weeds go to seed, uh, they're out there picking at the seeds. Yeah, and not only that, you know, a lot of those birds come in for the butterflies and the other creatures that are on the plants as well, which is awesome because you start to see the a little wildlife habitat. Going yeah, if on I there. could train them to eat geranium budworms, budworms. that would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was watching on my tomatoes. The tomato hornworms are back again. You still you still having problems? Oh with them? man, I, they went man. went away for a while. They went though, away right? for a while because I did the same thing. Picked mine, and then yesterday yeah. I went out. And I looked and I saw evidence that they were there, oh. even though I haven't found them yet. And then, and then, not only the tomato hornworm, and I'm hoping for, we have a, I I have an owl around. I see it in the evenings. I love that I have love an owl. owls. Okay, but the rabbits are gone. I cleared out all the shrubs, so the rabbits are gone. But I have what was a rat eating my tomatoes, and that's dead now. We talked about that. Now I have a mouse. I saw him in my tomato plant the other day, and uh -huh. it's a mouse. And I'm like, oh. It's it's not it's, it's nonstop. It's not no, going to end exactly. But they're really I, cute though. If you no, ever watch, them. no, no, they're not. <laughs> not the rats, but the mice are cute. Uh, you're thinking of uh, Stuart Little or something like that, <laughs> yeah. driving a little car. It's not cute. That, that's not real, John. Yeah. So, hey, Melinda. Um, one of the one of the things that we want to do for fall, though, besides the transplanting of you know the natives, and we talked about some of the other things. Um, the fertilizers that we use during this time of year are going to be a little bit different than what we use normally through the year, aside from, you know, products like Milorganite, because you don't want to encourage a lot of growth, right? Exactly. So you really want to work and improve your soil. That's the best thing you can do for your plants. And like you mentioned, Milorganite's a good choice because it's low nitrogen, slow release, 85% organic material in that fertilizer. And the research has shown that when the microorganisms work on releasing the nutrients from the Milorganite pellets, it releases some of the phosphorus and potassium that's often bound in our soil from years of 10, 10, 10, 12, 12, 12 fertilizing. And you know, um, and most of your listeners, that phosphorus is good for flowering and root development. We really want to promote root development. 
and potassium good for hardiness and disease resistance. So we're really setting up those plants for success, not only in getting established, whether they're new plantings or existing ones, but helping them get through the winter, whether it's the better growing conditions for some areas or the more stressful ones like my area. And you know what's crazy with Milorganite is, do you, do you know how long Milorganite's been around? I, I hate to put you on the spot. 92, but... 92 years. Okay. Yeah. So a little bit of background. You know, they've been they've been doing it for a while. They know what they're doing. And you know what's amazing is because I'm in the industry now with nurseries that there's a lot of companies that are starting to simulate their product but locally because you know where it's derived from. Right. They we have that byproduct all through the, the same country. Thing. Sure. It just happened to Mill Organite was ahead of the game in developing it and kind of creating what they did. And you're you're seeing like other people responding oh, to I'm that. I'm seeing now. San Diego companies develop you know fertilizers using from the byproduct i think there's some in texas as well like you know so obviously they're doing a good thing right. and well, people San are Diego's to a little it. different though because in malorganite they're they're taking their waste products and turning them into fertilizers organic fertilizers mm -hmm. which are fantastic but in san diego we're going to be drinking them <laughs> <laughs> and i think one of the things I'm That's absolutely that's true. Really interesting about malorganite is the way they process it. It's a very expensive process, and so a lot of municipalities have struggled to mimic that. But uh, I hope know, we don't skip on the processing. <laughs> hey, Melinda, we're going to take a break. We'll come right back and wrap things up. It's always a pleasure. Stay with okay, us. Thanks. We're going to come back with our final segment and say our goodbyes to Melinda and any of the last-minute thoughts. In the meantime, if you want to jump on board, 855-424-9825. Also, John at GardenAmerica.com and continue those uh, questions and comments right there on Facebook Live on your Saturday morning. Mosquitoes can transmit deadly diseases, including Zika virus, West Nile virus, and dengue fever. Use Summit Mosquito Dunks to kill mosquitoes before they become disease-spreading pests. Just float an organic mosquito dunk in ponds, bird baths, rain barrels, and any standing water to kill mosquito larvae for 30 days or longer. Don't worry, mosquito dunks won't harm people, pets, fish, birds, or other wildlife. Mosquito dunks are available at fine garden centers and hardware stores. This is Joe Lample from Growing a Greener World. With the environment in mind, I recommend Melorganite Organic Nitrogen Fertilizer for all your growing needs. From plants to people, active growth requires energy, nutrients, and a balanced diet. Nutrient-rich Melorganite feeds the soil and plants for up to three months. The organic nitrogen is slow release and won't burn plants even during hot, dry weather. Trust the fertilizer proven effective for 90 years. Melorganite for better results naturally. Visit Melorganite.com for a garden center near you. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-285-4765 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-285-4765. Again, 800-285-4765. Four seven six five. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-521-9579 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-521-9579 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-521-9579. That's 1-800-521-9579. Again, 1-800-521-9579. 
fine. Greece is cheap. But the airfare costs a fortune. Paris? Not much closer, and again, airfare... What about Puerto Vallarta? Let's face it, flying anywhere is just too expensive. Wait, what's this? Low-cost airlines. With one call to low-cost airlines, you'll drastically slash your travel costs. We're talking insanely low airline prices to any of your favorite destinations. Where would you like to go? London, Rome, Costa Rica, Australia? Wow, that's cheap. So why wait? Call now to learn how crazy cheap it is to fly anywhere in the U.S. or international. Our prices are so low, we can't publish them. The only way to get them is to call to instantly hear the most amazing best deals on airlines travel it's that easy so call now and start packing 800-217-5107 800-217-5107 that's 800-217-5107 does your water stain and damage your fixtures does it smell or taste bad are you worried about what's in your water water quality should not be painful and worrisome get hydro care water systems from wave home solutions with the most advanced purification technologies call wave home solutions today at 1-888-989-WAVE or go to greathealthywater.com hydro care will eliminate lime scale that causes hundreds of dollars in damage to pipes and appliances without using salt well water will no longer smell or stain your fixtures city water will be purified of harmful chlorine lead arsenic and chemicals wave home solutions provides the cleanest healthiest water at every faucet satisfaction guaranteed for more information call 1-888-989-WAVE 1-888-989-WAVE or go to greathealthywater.com that's greathealthywater.com biz talk radio Welcome back to the Garden America Radio Show with Brian, John, and Tiger. The phone lines are open right now at 855-424-9825. That's 855-424-9825. Or john at gardenamerica.com. Right back here on your Saturday morning and our friends on the East Coast almost uh, Saturday afternoon. It is uh, 51 minutes after the hour. John at GardenAmerica.com. Also 855-424-9825 along with Facebook Live. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's hope that doesn't continue. Tiger, back with uh, Melinda as we wrap things up. Hey, you know, before we wrap things up, I just have one quick question for her, if that's all right. Thank, thank you for asking okay. me. If that's okay. <laughs> that's, uh, I figured if I got in there quick, he couldn't say no. I was just wondering on transplanting perennials, uh, Melinda, the – uh, you know, it's a good time to divide them. You get in there with the shovel and you just dig it down and separate them into chunks that you're moving. But should you cut off the foliage when you do that and just move the basic root system and let them re-sprout? Or do you keep the foliage on? Because a lot of people, when they do yeah. that, see it wilt and aren't sure if they did a bad job. I usually leave the foliage on. My whole philosophy is the more leaves, the more energy being produced to get those roots forming. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of it depends on the health and vigor of the plants, but if you've got some leaves growing, they're at least producing energy. You do get some wilting initially, but that's mm -hmm. a good reminder to water. Yep. Um, I don't know what mm -hmm. your philosophy is. <laughs> My philosophy is to listen to anything Melinda Myers tells me because <laughs> she is, is well, one of the country's of great, great gardening experts. No, I think that's an excellent I idea. Wanna, I did want to mention one other thing. The benefit of digging and dividing plants regularly. Some plants like asters, you can help increase their vigor in colder climates and help keep their growth more compact. Um, repeat blooming plants like daylily, repeat blooming daylilies, or mm -hmm. coreopsis by regular division, you don't need to do as much deadheading. And so in my book, I'd rather divide every couple of years than deadhead once. Uh, that's, a, that's a good idea, Tiger. Yeah. Divide and conquer. Wrote it down. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us this weekend, Melinda. And, you know, I see that you have some uh, events that you have coming up you have one in was it wisconsin at a theater where you're going to be talking about fall planting and then how do you say this pasquisi home and gardens pasquisi in the Pasquese chicago area so i'll be talking about partners for hydrangeas 
Yeah, yeah. So if anybody's in Wisconsin or in the Chicago area, go to Melinda's website and you can take a look at the events that she'll be at and go Sounds and say like hi. Hydrangea dating site. I've never heard of that. That's the interesting <laughs> part, partner. Yeah. Things are pretty rough in the Midwest, what can I say? <laughs> I love it. Hey, Melinda, have a great uh, Labor Day weekend. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you uh, enjoy your Monday off if you're able to take that off. And I am uh, taking it off, so thank you. Yeah, get out there and have some fun in the yard. You bet. Take care, you guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Bye. I hear you. Is 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 this the second voice in my head thing going on? Yeah. You can't. Well, they can't hear you because I think they're picking it up from like one of our other mics or something. Let's go to uh, Muriel who called and is online eight five five four two four nine eight two five. Muriel, welcome to Grab America. How can we help you? Hi, John. I knew you years years ago at Nursery Land. El Cajon. <laughs> of course. Um, I have problems with my lemon tree and my orange tree. Mm -hmm. My lemon tree is dying from the top down. The lower branches are still healthy and putting out leaves. The dying branches up above had lemons this year. Last year I overwatered it, but I've quit doing that. The tree is about 30 years old. Now, the, lemon, the orange trees, I have a couple of navels that are at least 10 years old. And the last couple of years, this time of year, they've developed kind of a, on, on the leaves, it looks like kind of a, a swirly, um, fungusy looking, not, not fuzzy like fungus, but just sort of a. Is it kind of glassy? The leaves curl and almost, yeah. So those are my two problems. Well, I'll take the second one because it sounds like it's just psyllid, right? Yeah, it does. Go ahead yeah. with that. Do you, so, so on the navel oranges, during this time of year, for all citrus, they get psyllid, which is a larvae of a fly. And what happens is this fly embeds its, its eggs into the leaf itself, and then the, it hatches, and then it eats. And it looks like a little gla uh, glassy racetrack that swirls through the leaf. And then when it gets big enough, yeah. it, it flies away. It comes out of the leaf and flies away. But the damage is done, and then the leaves curl along with it. And it's very common during this time of year with the warm weather and what we're, what we're witnessing with the temperatures. Um, but for the most part, it's not detrimental to the tree at all. It's just it is a... a um, cosmetic Dis disfiguring yeah you know damage you could use products like spinosad um you know different insecticides to make it you know make them not do that but at the same time it's also n nothing that you need to be super concerned about with the overall health of the tree like i said it's seasonal and it'll stop when the temperatures drop probably for you late october and november You'll, you'll see the damage not occurring anymore because the bug can't survive at those temperatures or the, the, the breeding cycle is over and they don't um, continue to do that through the whole year. It's just during most of the, the warmer months. Yeah, the other thing uh, to watch out for is how many of the leaves become damaged because as, <clears throat> excuse me, as the leaves drop, you're losing the ability for the plant to um, uh, have chlorophyll that's yeah. going to produce food photosynthesize for the plants so if it if it's dropping on an inordinate amount of leaves then i would go ahead and use the spinosa it's an organic spray so it's really not going to hurt anything and then muriel are you still in the el cajon area hey, mm -hmm. okay the as far as the lemon goes this has been record uh record hot summer for san diego and it's, uh, the further inland you go, the the worse that it's been. And if the plant came out with lemons at the beginning of the year, it seems like it was doing fine until something happened. And normally, when a plant goes into stress, the one thing that it's going to do is try to hold on to its fruit because that's how it reproduces, and it'll lose its leaves. You know what, Muriel, send me a Monday note to...
to John at GardenAmerica.com, and I'll finish that answer uh, right back to you. Thank you. Top of the hour, six minutes after. That's fine, too. Okay, we've got news coming up on many of these uh, BizTalk Radio affiliates. We are back at six minutes after Garden America. Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. Stay with us. Hour two coming up next. The opinions you hear on Biz Talk Radio are those of the hosts, callers, and guests, and do not necessarily reflect those of this station, Biz Talk Radio, its management, or advertisers. The information on Biz Talk Radio does not constitute a recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or service. If you have any questions about Biz Talk Radio, contact us at 817-274-1609 or at biztalkradio.com. Biz Talk Radio. For USA Radio News, I'm Wendy King. President Trump confirms off-the-record comments that he made to Bloomberg News, saying that he planned to make trade talks with Canada, quote, so insulting that they're not going to be able to make a deal. In North Carolina, the president did not deny the comments. But I said, in the end, it's okay, because at least Canada knows how I feel, so it's fine. The talks with Canada have been hung up on issues related to cars, agriculture, and other sectors. Canadian Foreign Minister Chrystia Freeland said there's no deal. The government of Canada will not sign an agreement unless it's good for Canada and good for Canadians. A federal judge has turned down requests from Texas and other states to end the DACA program, which shields younger illegal immigrants from being deported. You're listening to USA Radio News. Ugh, you guys, I am so ready for the beach. Um, ha, I'm not. What? The trip is coming up soon. Yeah, my beach body is nowhere close to where I want it to be. Same here. I've got to lose some weight before we go. Plus, I know you're going to want to post pictures from the trip all over Facebook. Well, why don't you guys try Calitrin? Calitrin? That sounds really familiar. It's super easy to take, and it's even healthy for you. You just take it at bedtime, and it does all the work for you. You're joking. No, I'm not joking, and you're going to feel good taking it. So I got the Calitrin, and I got into camp that I had not been into a year and a half. It also took my hot flashes away. Hey, this is Jack, and I've been using Calitrin. Uh, I used to go to the chiropractor at least once a week. The Calitrin has definitely helped me, and I definitely recommend it to anybody. This is Lynn. I've been on Calitrin, and I love it, and I've lost 45 pounds. So where can I get Calitrin? You can go to their website at toploss.com, or you can call them at 833-TOPLOSS. Heavy rains in the east from Pennsylvania to the mid-Atlantic states downed power lines, closed roads, and kept emergency first responders busy on Friday. Meteorologist Eric Van Dam says Lancaster County, Pennsylvania was hit really hard. When you get 10 and a half inches of rain in two to three hour period, you're bound to see uh, scenes like this play out. Unfortunately, uh, there were reports of mobile homes being lifted off of their foundations. There were several swift water rescues that took place. A big scare for people flying Hawaiian Airlines from Oakland to Maui. A passenger's can of pepper spray went off. People started picking up sweaters. You know, they were covering their faces with their shirts. Um, people were shouting. I mean, someone was, you know, drop the masks, drop the masks, you know, give us some air. Fifteen people were treated for respiratory issues. The pepper spray's owner could face a fine of about $2,000 because you're not allowed to bring that on an airplane. You're listening to USA Radio News. The following update is for drivers who pay too much for car insurance due to DUIs, DWIs, tickets, or anything else. Our company specializes in low-cost SR22 auto insurance. We know that mistakes happen and offer free quotes for very affordable auto insurance meant specifically for you, the overpaying high-risk driver. The quote is free and we'll handle the filing so you can start saving money. Call 800-758-0725. 800-758-0725. Authorities are looking for hundreds of insects in Philadelphia. USA's Rick Vincent reports. Police in Philadelphia are looking for whoever stole $40,000 worth of insects and lizards from the Philadelphia Insectarium and Butterfly Pavilion. They took hissing cockroaches for some reason and hairy scorpions, bumblebee millipedes, leopard geckos, and lots of other insects and lizards, including a six-eyed sand spider, one of the most venomous in the world. 
About 7,000 animals in all are now missing, more than 80% of those at the facility. They also took logs of what lived there, leading police to think it was an inside job. That and the fact that museum uniforms were left hanging from dives stabbed into the wall. For USA Radio News, I'm Rick Vincent. The reason that we are here today is because of love because of how much we love this woman. Musicians, including Stevie Wonder, along with family, friends, and a former president, all gathered at the Greater Grace Temple in Detroit to pay tribute to the late Aretha Franklin. Former President Bill Clinton praised her life. The secret of her greatness was she took this massive talent and this perfect culture that raised her and decided to be the composer of her own life song. <laughs> what a song. It turned out to be. And Smokey Robinson sang his tribute. Really gonna miss you. It's really gonna be different without you. For USA Radio News, I'm Wendy King. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-569-3414. That's 800-569-3414. Again, 800-569-3414. Welcome to the Garden America Show, the country's most listened to gardening program. This is your chance to join us as we talk about gardening, horticulture, landscaping, in fact, anything that has to do with the world of gardening. The phone lines are open right now at 1-855-424-9825. That's 1-855-424-9825 for your questions and comments. Or john at gardenamerica.com. And if you're watching us on Facebook Live, you can also post your questions and comments right there on our page during the broadcast. Now, here's Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, and Tiger Palafox on the Garden America Radio and Media Network. Okay, good afternoon to those on the East Coast. It is uh, six minutes after the hour. The rest of us uh, still Saturday morning. Hey, happy Labor Day weekend to you. Didn't get a chance to mention that. Uh, hopefully you have a three-day weekend to enjoy. Uh, most of us do here. We are broadcasting live from the iHeart Media Studios in beautiful San Diego, California, and it's good to have you along. Uh, Biz Talk Radio streaming. John at GardenAmerica.com. Want to send him a question or comment? We'll address that over the air. Want to give us a call? Take a shot, 855-424-9825. And again, Facebook Live, where we uh, continue to monitor for the entire two hours, Tiger. Yeah. That's the latest. And I want to make a correction. I think, if if I'm thinking back, uh, because I posted regarding the question regarding the citrus about the product to solve the leaf miner problem. But I, I think I said psyllid is the name of the bug, and I meant to say leaf miner. Oh, you yeah. know what? You did say psyllid. Yeah. And and, and I it, and I just assumed leaf miner. Yeah, my fault. So right. it, is not a, it is not a psyllid issue. It's a leaf miner issue. Asian citrus psyllid is a much different and bigger problem. Right. And I don't think she has that at all. It's a leaf miner, which is a very common thing. Well, yeah, right having now. a minor problem is better than a major, major problem. Right, you don't right? want a leaf major, then what are you going to do? That would be horrible. Oh, you could never get rid of them. Right. Um, but, um, you know, in, in the leaf miner issue, doesn't just plague citrus alone. There's a lot of, um, a lot of uh, foliage plants this time of year that get those issues when it comes to warm weather. And then the other thing people need to understand is during this time of year, bugs just plague everything i mean whether it's worms on bougainvillea or on citrus oh or on the roses. bougainvillea looper has been yeah i don't know if you've had it on yours oh. but oh yeah now what what does the looper look like the damage is holes and not holes but chunks taken out of the leaves if you have parts of your leaves there's uh, nice red leaves not well those are the bracts these are the green leaves okay on the yeah right, right they just go through and they they eat them up i mean they're horrible 
Yeah, and then it's funny. But that's something Spinoza takes care of immediately if yeah. you spray. But, but you have to continue to spray every two weeks to 10 days or 10 days to two weeks? Yeah, usually once they'll do it. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it is only once. So you see the results right away. But it's funny with these problems with these chewing insects, whether it's a worm or the looper, um, there's always the byproduct. And everybody sees damage done to the plant, and then they look at the plant and they see these black dots all over the place, mm -hmm. and they think those are the bugs. And it's no, those are the poop that – the bugs have eaten your plant, and now they're dropping all over. I don't your... think you can say poop on the radio. No, I'll have to check that. Yeah. Well, he's using technical terms. Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. Then like... you're you're okay then. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> you know, that's the same spelled forwards and backwards. Gosh, it is, isn't it? <laughs> I love how he thought about it. It's like it's like Bob, right? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, it's people 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 think that the little black droppings are the bugs, but it's not, and so. They have to realize that it's a chewing insect because you don't always see them. They're so hard to find sometimes. I don't think I've, out of all the bougainvilleas that I've seen getting eaten up, I don't think I've still seen a looper on the plant. I did once. <laughs> it's like a little green. They're very it's tiny. They must be very small. tiny, really yeah. tiny. But oh, they yeah. eat a lot. Oh, it seems like wow. it would be a bear eating Smorgasbord. You know, yeah. speaking of palindromes, want to know the longest palindrome I can remember? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's longer ones, but this is the only one I can remember. You ready? Yeah. We, we're ready, John. Okay, a man, a plan, a canal, still on the line. Panama. Wow, that's very good. That's, yeah. And that's the same backwards and forwards, and I understand Muriel's still on Muriel the line. Muriel is still there. We appreciate that. Thank you so much, Steve. Muriel, uh, you're back on the air. Continue, please. Yes. So uh, you suggest Spinoza sprayed on my navel orange trees. Right. And it then, hasn't affected the Valencia or the the lemon that's in a different part of the yard, the lemon tree that's dying. Yeah, I was going to say we we had to rush because of the break that was coming up. But I, I think that you might want to check the watering on the lemon tree. The Because of the heat, the... The lemon is going to drop its leaves, as I was as I started to say, trying to hold on to its fruit. And I think if you can get enough moisture to the leaves that it'll come back. And the way to do okay, that I is did have a watering did, did have, have a, a watering problem last uh -huh. up through the winter and spring. I was over watering it, which I know better, but I did. And so sap was leaking out of the bark, which mm -hmm. um I understood was from overwatering, so I quit watering, and now the hot weather came. Yeah. However, the dying off had already begun before the summer. Yeah, if you can get water out to the drip line of the tree, I think that, you know, you'll have branches that are totally dead, and you can clip those off uh, come next spring, but I think the plant will relief out in the, the wherever the stems are still green. Okay. And then you can also take a water-soluble food like, um, oh, say, uh, kelp, liquid kelp, and you can spray some of that right onto the tree, and the plant can absorb that through the stems and the leaves. And being organic, it's not going to burn or anything. Just make sure the temperatures aren't um, maybe over 85 when you do it. Thank you. Now, um, the branches that are dying, it's the two topmost. It's as if they're two central. Yeah. I mean, that'll that'll happen. It happened to one of my lime trees when I had a watering issue where I had the two major branches in the middle of the tree actually die out. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the lime, but then it came back after I corrected the watering issue. It took about three months, but I definitely saw some growth in return after I corrected the watering issue on my own lime tree. Yeah, one of the things to remember, Muriel, is if you do have part of the tree die, you still have a big root system. So yeah. when part of the tree dies and it gets cut off, the root system is much bigger than that plant yeah. needs at that point. So it's going to push out a lot of new growth. So they usually do recover quickly as long as, you know, something hasn't killed the root system, you know, like gophers or, or something like that. By the way, where, where these two uh, tall limbs, central leaders, split mm -hmm. off. Just below that, I'm seeing cracking in the barking, cracking in the bark. 
Yeah, that that could have come because of the heat. When the tree loses its leaves, the stems that used to be covered by leaves are now exposed to direct sunlight, and you get sunburn. And it's just like your skin if it gets sunburned, how you peel. Uh, that's the same thing that... It's on the shady side. It's on the shady side of the tree and down below where the leaves were. That's why I worry mm. about that. Well, it affects I the... I will follow your advice. Yeah, it, it affects the tree. It can affect it in different parts. Um, you know, it, it's just a, like a shock to the system. But try what we said, and if it doesn't work, we were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, Muriel, does that help you, Muriel? Yeah, it was so nice to hear Thank from you, you so Muriel. Thank you. Thank you for your call. And I'm glad you're doing well. Thank you. Thank Great. You. All right. Muriel, and hopefully that uh, will solve her problems. I hope she got spinosad correctly when she repeated it. It is spinosad. How do you spell it? Muriel. S P N O. No, I. It's P I N. I N. Yeah, spin. spin. S O A D. S A D. A D. Right. Okay. Well, don't ask me in five minutes because I'll, I'll have forgotten. <laughs> But, you know, and with citrus, I think people have to realize, no matter where you're from, that they're they're native to kind of more tropical regions. And like you mentioned, when we have that, when, when, when you're in an area, maybe Arizona, California, Pacific Southwest, where we get those hot, they, they do have sensitive. And this is why growers sometimes would, in the past, paint the bark when they did severe pruning and stuff like that, because... Even though we feel like we're in California and it's orange groves and lemon groves all over, this is not exactly the ideal climate for the plant. I mean, it, they do grow well here, but this is not anything close to kind of what they're native This to, is an arid right? desert. Yeah. Basically, right to the ocean. Yeah. They, they grow well here as long as they're taken care, care of. of. You won't be driving by the hillsides and see, see wild citrus oranges. growing. Yeah, exactly. It's true. You know, it's very like, true. And, you know, so... Um, yeah, look at the wild citrus. And, and, miles, miles. And, I, and I always wondered about that because for how many citrus we have through California and how many avocados, I'm like, how come we don't see just avocado trees popping up on our slopes you know right. you got you got to think of, everywhere yeah you know a critter at some point in time took an avocado and transplanted it somewhere else just like right. other plants get moved around but nope you don't ever see them but uh, you do see figs coming up oh yeah figs are a weed all righty the music means it is time for yet another break but we are coming right back and again we urge you to uh, give us your questions, comments, or ask your questions and make your comments. John at GardenAmerica.com, also 855-424-9825. Best way to do it, we monitor it for the entire two hours. Facebook Live, and we thank you for joining us. I'm Brian Main, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palapa. Mosquitoes can transmit deadly diseases, including Zika virus, West Nile virus, and dengue fever. Use Summit Mosquito Dunks to kill mosquitoes before they become disease-spreading pests. Just float an organic mosquito dunk in ponds, bird baths, rain barrels, and any standing water to kill mosquito larvae for 30 days or longer. Don't worry, mosquito dunks won't harm people, pets, fish, birds, or other wildlife. Mosquito dunks are available at fine garden centers and hardware stores. Hi, this is gardening expert Melinda Myers. Keeping the environment in mind, I recommend Melorganite slow-release nitrogen fertilizer for all your growing needs. From plants to people, active growth requires energy, nutrients, and a balanced diet. Nutrient-rich Melorganite feeds the soil and plants for up to 10 weeks. The non-burning, non-leaching formula provides a slow and consistent flow of nutrients. Trust the fertilizer proven effective for over 90 years. Melorganite for better results. Visit Melorganite.com for a garden center near you. Attention investors. Respected names in the financial services industry are not evaluating if there will be a significant market downturn, but when. Higher interest rates and prospects of a trade war suggest the stock market is headed into a perilous direction. Subprime mortgages, which are back, could potentially devastate the real estate market as they did before. And with stocks simply overdue for a fall after the second longest bull run in history, even bullish analysts are recognizing these indicators that equities are in big trouble and have projected stock market losses up to 40%. You can protect your IRA or 401k for maximum safety and opportunity with physical gold and silver, as they are assets that remain genuine stores of value no matter what's happening in the marketplace. Call Augusta Precious Metals today at 855-858-5806. That's 855-858-5806 to get your free guide to precious metals investing. 
Call Augusta Precious Metals today at 855-858-5806. That's 855-858-5806. As a small business owner, there's one word that you absolutely dread, payroll. For small businesses, it's a big burden. You may think you're saving time and money doing it yourself. But come on, are you? Timesheets, processing checks, calculating taxes, a total waste of your time. Paychex simplifies payroll processing, saving you time and money. Submit your payroll online, fax it in, or call your dedicated Paychex payroll specialist. And you're done. Learn more at trypaychex.com. Come on, do the math. The IRS issues out 8 million penalties a year. Make one mistake and you're on the hook. On average, you're losing nearly one business day every month doing payroll. That's time and money you'll never get back, unless you get paychecks. More than half a million small businesses already do. Call 877-649-5324. Trade payroll pressure for peace of mind. Call now, 877-649-5324. That's 877-649-5324. Do you have an old car sitting in your driveway? How would you like to learn a hassle-free way to get rid of it, help kids in need, and get a great tax donation in the process? It's real easy. One simple free call to our car donation hotline is all it takes. Call the Nishama Foundation at 800-721-6723, 800-721-6723. We'll come pick your car up for free and give you a tax donation for the full value of the car, running or not. The value of your unwanted car will go to help kids in need. It's fast and easy. Just call us and your car will be gone and on its way to helping children in 48 hours. And you get a nice tax deduction. Call the Nishama Foundation now to get rid of your car, help kids, and get a tax right. 721 6723 800 721 6723 800 Welcome back to the Garden America Radio Show with Brian, John, and Tiger. The phone lines are open right now at 855-424-9825. That's 855-424-9825 or john at gardenamerica.com. Right back here on Facebook Live. Also, uh, Biz Talk Radio streaming around the world and across the country. 855-424-9825. Facebook Live. Also, john at gardenamerica.com. It's October 28th. October 28th, that's good. So mark that down on the calendar. I've got it right here, Steel Trap. Okay. October, and we're talking about the... Uh, we're talking about yeah. the Fiesta of Roses in San Diego. It's the National Convention of the American Rose Society, and the auction is going to be on the 28th. Uh, if you want to go to the convention, you can go online and you can register. But if you, all you want to do is uh, come to the auction, uh, there's no need to register. You're just welcome. Now, what is come. different about this auction than previous years, John? This is a very special auction. Well, one of the differences is that it's held in conjunction with the American Rose Society, mm -hmm. their national convention. So we already have 150 people signed up to attend the auction. And there'll be more than that at the convention probably 350 to 400 yeah, people. Yeah, this, this is huge convention. this year. Yeah, this is big. Yeah, everything's coming up roses at that auction. Absolutely. And um, and we, if you want to see the roses that are going to be available at the auction, you can go to CCRS, which stands for California Coastal Rose Society. So CCRSauction.com, and there's a list of oh, over 250 roses that are going to be auctioned. And the reason we had this discussion is because you said that uh, this is the weekend you're going to start uh, – getting the roses ready. Well, I have to cut them all back because there's about six weeks from the time you cut a rose until it blooms. And I'd like to have some in bloom for the auction, even though it's, you know, right. late October. But it, it'd be nice if people could see some sure. of them in bloom. absolutely. Yeah, so, and that's another thing. If you're at home in your garden, mm -hmm. if you cut your roses back now, uh, late October, you're going to have a nice fall bloom. Yep. Not not quite as nice as the spring bloom, but pretty close. But you'll have something nice to Because during the summer heat, the roses kind of rest. You know, they don't yeah. really do a lot. Though I did see 
You had a nice rose in your garden. We put in the yeah, newsletter. Thank you for that. Yeah, I liked it. They took that uh, close up. You could see the individual dew drops on that rose. Yeah. And thank you for remembering the name. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Wedding Bells. So, uh, yeah, no, I've had a lot of luck uh, this year. Uh, Pope John Paul, <coughs> Wedding Bells. Uh, I think my Laura Bush rose has bloomed a few times. So, um, not a bad year in the patio for the old roses, despite the heat. I didn't know you had Laura Bush. I do. You still have that. I huh? still have that, yes. I like that. There's a. A number of roses that were named after first ladies. There's a Barbara Bush rose. Mm -hmm. There's a... Um, it's got to be a Jackie Kennedy rose. No, there isn't. Oh, come There's on. There's a John F. Kennedy. There's Seriously. a Hillary first lady. Okay. And well, How uh, did she get left out of the mix? Interesting. Uh, I'm trying to think. There was, of course, uh, an Eleanor Roosevelt. Right, because of that famous description. Yeah, Has Tiger said, heard about that description? I don't know if he did. Have you ever no. heard of the Eleanor Roosevelt's a very old rose? I, I have, I've never seen it, and I don't know if you can buy it anywhere. Now, John, do you know the description by heart? Pretty much. Okay, go ahead and tell Tiger. This is interesting. Well, she had said that she was really impressed to find that she was having a rose named after her until she read the description. And the description said, no good in a bed, but fine up against a wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> and that is uh, oh, wow. the description of the, the Eleanor, Eleanor Roosevelt, Roosevelt rose, rose. Yeah. oh wow no good in bed but uh, best up no good in a bed because it, it's not a good bedding rose you right know, it's not going to be short and compact oh, no. it needs kind of tall room growing. to stretch out yeah so put it up against a wall so there you go <laughs> she had a great sense of humor I guess that's funny we thought you'd like that too. yeah that was a good one um and then if uh, y anybody's in the, what is it, the Sonoma County Fairgrounds area next Wednesday. No, not next Wednesday. A week from no, next a Wednesday. A week from next Wednesday on the 12th, John and I are going to be attending the National Heirloom, Heirloom Ex Festival. Exposition. Exposition. Exposition, right. Yeah. And so, yeah, if you, I mean, look for us. It, there's a lot of people there, but I'm sure you'll find us. You know, come That's up like and saying say I'm hi. going to Woodstock. Look for us. Hey, you never know. <laughs> 500,000 people. <laughs> you know, the, as I think of the pictures I've seen of Woodstock, the Heirloom Expo's got similar. a lot of lo similar-looking people. <laughs> Same kind of people, huh? Same kind of people, but it is fun. Uh, if you go online, you can read all about it. And it's a collection of heirloom fruits and vegetables and flowers. From, I think there's even a, a Dahlia show going I think so, yeah, during yeah. that. So uh, from all over the country, people come from all over the country. And also there's uh, heirloom animals. Heirloom Heir animals. Heirloom so animals. So I can get my pygmy goats while I'm up there? You might be able to. You think I can to. fly back with them? Uh, I don't know about that. You going to get your hedgehog? No, they don't have hedgehogs. Those aren't heirloom hedgehogs animals. Hedgehogs are illegal in California. So are uh, ferrets. You know, we, Brian, uh, Tiger and I, realized we did we because we didn't know ahead of time i don't think tiger did <coughs> when we went to england that there's a hedgehog crisis and that they're almost extinct right oh no i didn't know that yeah that like london there's they somebody said there's only like 30 hedgehogs in london or something oh, no I th yeah i think i remember hearing you talk that they about that that's they, why the sonic the hedgehog game is so popular over there well they have little tunnels that they make that go through fences and things for the hedgehogs to crawl through because what was happening is people were putting up their fences and blocking out the hedgehogs so they can't move from one place to another. And uh, very traumatic for them. Aw, <laughs> little hedgehog. Uh, Poor guy or girl. So anyway, they're definitely trying to preserve them. Hey, I got an email from our, our one of our loyal listeners, Steve in Simi Valley. Hello, Steve. And Steve said that he heard us talking about lemons. So he sent over a picture of a lemon cucumber. <laughs> what what doesn't he grow? No, but he was, this looked to me like something you would grow because Probably. it was in a one-gallon can. Yep. I'm sorry, a five-gallon container with a tomato cage. And he put the cucumber in the tomato cage in this five-gallon container. So it's something you could grow on your patio. Very good. And uh, for those, um, I guess we can't. Maybe next break we'll uh, we'll show what you brought me to the Facebook camera. Oh yeah, what, what's behind? Well, that'll you. give people who want to go take a look. They can go over and uh, get a log on to Facebook. 
Yeah. All you have to do is go to Facebook and look for Garden America Radio. Garden show. America Radio on uh, Facebook, and yeah. you can catch our, our live show. We've got about a half hour to go. Afterwards, uh, recording yet another podcast. Uh, hopefully, you've downloaded the iHeartRadio app to uh, search for Garden America and to listen to the podcast. John also puts a link in our newsletter every Friday that comes out, which will take you right to that page, which has all of the podcasts on there that we've done over the past several months or so. Okay, we've covered the hedgehog crisis. You can check <laughs> that off our list. Yeah, well, that was important. Aren't there small hedgehogs, like miniature ones? There are. How, how do you – really? Yeah. 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 There's like – a normal hedgehog, and then there's even one that's smaller than a normal one? They they use... He's a hedgehog expert, I'm telling you. Well, they have miniature he- hedgehogs as pets in the United States. They're really cute. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. get a raccoon. <laughs> no, raccoons are not a good idea. Raccoon. It is almost 30 minutes after the hour break time. We are coming right back, of course. Thank you for watching us on Facebook Live. I'm Brian Main, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. Email us, john at gardenamerica.com. You can also... Uh, Jump on Facebook Live with your questions or comments. And again, 855-424-9825. Want a better looking lawn with less effort? Husqvarna's robotic automower is the effortless way to mow. Husqvarna's intelligent design allows the automower to maneuver around your lawn without supervision, even over tricky terrain and around obstacles. It knows when it needs to be charged and directs itself back to the charging dock. With convenient control options, the Husqvarna allows you to set it and forget it, even from your smartphone. Thanks to Husqvarna, you can have a great-looking lawn and more time to enjoy it this season. Visit Mission Hills Nursery at 1525 Fort Stockton Drive in San Diego or go to missionhillsnursery.com for more info. If your credit card bills have gotten out of hand and you care about your credit call consolidated credit now if the interest rates on your credit cards are so high it'll take years to get out of debt call consolidated credit now they've helped over 5 million people with credit card debt without destroying your credit they can consolidate your debts into one lower payment reduce your interest rates and get you out of debt fast the program works call consolidated credit now call 800-350-3241 800-350-3241 that's 800-350-3241. Consolidated Credit Counseling Services, Inc. 5701 West Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33313. Not a loan company. Licensed by the New York Department of Financial Services and by the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation. Maryland DM19. Oregon DM80031. Licensed by the Virginia State Corporation. Commission license number DC32. Establishment of a plan may adversely affect the individual's credit rating or credit scores. Non-payment of debt may lead creditors to increase finance charges or collections activity, including litigation. Attention all authors. Page Publishing is looking for authors. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Page Publishing will get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, Apple iTunes, and other outlets. They handle all aspects of the publishing process for you. Printing, cover art, publicity, copyright, and editing. Call 800-557-6095 now for your free author submission kit. That's 800-557-6095 for your free author submission kit. Again, call 800-557-6095. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-285-4765 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-285-4765. Again, 800-285-4765. Do you owe $10,000 or more on at least two federal student loans? Then you may qualify for new programs offered by the Department of Education. These programs can reduce your interest, lower your payments, and possibly qualify you for loan forgiveness. If you have $10,000 or more and at least two federal student loans and currently not in school, you may qualify for one of these programs. 
Call now to check your eligibility. Student Loan Advisors are standing by to help you determine if you qualify for these new programs. They can help you reduce your interest, lower your payment, and even forgive a portion of your student loan debt. Take control of your financial future. Make this free five-minute free call now to Nationwide Student Loans and learn how you can reduce your student loan debt. 800-439-1588. 800-439-1588. 800-439-1588. Does your water stain and damage your fixtures? Does it smell or taste bad? Are you worried about what's in your water? Water quality should not be painful and worrisome. Get HydroCare Water Systems from Wave Home Solutions with the most advanced purification technologies. Call Wave Home Solutions today at 1-888-989-WAVE or go to greathealthywater.com. HydroCare will eliminate lime scale that causes hundreds of dollars in damage to pipes and appliances without using salt. Well water will no longer smell or stain your fixtures. City water will be purified of harmful chlorine, lead, arsenic, and chemicals. Wave Home Solutions provides the cleanest, healthiest water at every faucet. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, call 1-888-989-WAVE, 1-888-989-WAVE, or go to greathealthywater.com. That's greathealthywater.com. Wave Home Solutions for a healthy, comfortable home. Biz Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Garden America Radio Show with Brian, John, and Tiger. The phone lines are open right now at 855-424-9825. That's 855-424-9825. Or john at gardenamerica.com. Right back here on Garden America for your Saturday morning, Labor Day weekend. Hopefully you can enjoy those three days. It is uh, that time of year, I guess, uh, before you know it, football in full swing. I know college football, a lot of teams... Started last night, NFL not too far behind. So, yes, it is that time of year, getting into autumn, fall before you know it. So, hey, but speaking of uh, plants and and things like that, no good way to segue here. I can't segue from that to to, Uh, to that. Speaking of football, oh, wait a minute. Speaking of football, let's talk about cannas, shall we? Because when you think football, you think cannas. And what you need to do is you need to say, I'd like to segue, but I can't do it. I I can't do it. So, what you're looking at right now on Facebook Live on that wide shot is a canna that uh, John brought in to give to me, which is very nice of him. And for the past couple of weeks, we had a couple of these uh, leaves in, um, in this vase right here. Lasted a couple, two or three weeks. So they make good, uh, semi-good cut leaves to put into uh, vases, John? Well, for arrangements, it looks like canna leaves would be awesome. Yeah. Well, did you talk about that a couple of weeks ago? Did you say that yeah. florists use those? As backdrops in, in floral arrangements. Right. Tropical mm-hmm. arrangements. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Um. I got a question for the people I'm looking at the shot now out on Facebook. There. It's showing us. Yeah, it's good. So. It's a good director there. <laughs> Tiger's a good director. Tiger's on to something else. He's bored. <laughs> no. Yeah, Go nice, ahead. nice can of talk, guys. I got so much to talk about. But um, I got a question for the people following right now because we're talking about our podcast that we're going to be taping after the show. Yes. And John and I have narrowed it down to two things. So we want our listeners to help us out what we should do. Okay. Number one is watering. So how to water, why you water a certain way plants anything that has to do with watering yeah exactly we're going to focus on watering your plants okay containers in the ground all that stuff or topic number two fall bulbs what what it's time to plant um what varieties you have techniques of planting of fall bulbs and you know little tips that maybe we have when it comes to planting fall bulbs. Okay, so in terms of uh, today's podcast, uh, it's either going to be watering yep. or fall bulbs, yep. which eventually we'll get to both of them anyway. Oh yeah. But if uh, just just tell us uh, via Facebook Live or uh, John at GardenAmerica dot com uh, which podcast subject you'd like us to discuss today. Exactly. Watering or fall bulbs. Yeah. You know, but watering I feel is such a, a universal thing that especially novice gardeners just don't. Don't understand. Well, yeah, Shell just jumped in and said fall bulbs <laughs> on, on Facebook. So yeah. there, there's one boat. She knows how to water for sure. But I think, you know what? You're right about watering. I can't tell you how many people have called this show over the years. And when we try to delve into their problem, more times than not, it's not that they didn't water enough. They watered too much. Yeah, that is true, right? Because people think that they can't go wrong. 
with more water. It's farthest from the truth. Well, you always want to do something. <laughs> yes. so, you know, you don't want to let the plant just no. grow. You've got to do you, something, you, you, right? You know what? You have to be the observant. The easiest thing to do is turn on the hose. But be observant. Water. You know, look at your plant before you water it. Look at it. You know, every couple of days, I go outside, I check every plant. Well, you know, if the plant's in a container, it's important to know what kind of soil you have in there, too. Sure. Uh, you know, I told you about this rose I'd been searching for for 15 years called Sunrise Sunset. Finally got one in a 15-gallon container that was mostly dead uh, and doing my best to to revive it. But I, I, I watered it a couple times, and then I thought, you know, I, it's a big container. I better stick my finger in there. And Dry. No, down an inch. It was soggy. It was uh, like, oh, even, oh, just an inch down. Yeah, it was like a peat bog in there. And I looked at, you know, I dug up a little of the soil, and I saw they had used... Some type of soil, maybe Clay. miracle. No, it was like a well, uh, prepared, maybe a miracle grow oh, okay. soil. So there, were, there was no drainage. that had a lot of peat moss. It, oh, it had drainage. Well, why was it still so wet? Because though? it was a peat moss base or a okay. coconut fiber base, something that holds water. Where I know I overwater, so I always use soils that drain real well. Right. You know, if you look at this uh, canna that I brought you. It has the ocean forest potting soil in it, and it, you can see that there's a lot of perlite there's, in there. There's everything. The white is the perlite. Right. Also, I should tell you that I put osmocote in there, so whatever you do, don't feed it for don't the do next anything. three months. You said leave it the way it is for three months. Yeah, just water it whenever it needs. So it. around November, December is when you I want can... to put some HB 101 on it. That's sure. okay. Sure. That'll help. Now, then after three months, bigger pot? We'll have to see. Doesn't. We'll see. Okay. And yeah. you said there's a rhizome? Yeah, that's why it's all over on the corner. It's not that I can't plant in the center of a pot. There's, and I was, I was surprised when I dug it up. The w rhizome was pure white. I mean, and really? What, yeah. Like the little feeder roots white? Like no, no. Know? The rhizome itself, it's like a white rod or cigar, just mm -hmm. pure white. Whoa. So is that indigenous to the canis? No, most no. cannas have brown rhizomes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? But what is? Uh, so we don't know maybe, why. No, because of the variegation, maybe. Yeah, it could be yeah. that the variety. Variegation. Okay, sure. Yeah. All right. And I don't know if that means that that particular new leaf that's going to come out is going to have more white in it or not. But I, I was surprised to see that. All right, and and then back to your question on the, you know, does it need a bigger pot, Brian? It doesn't need a bigger pot. Um, I think you know what could happen is that you know. It, produces rhizomes and keeps growing right. it could fill out that pot which you just pull it out divide it and then replant it sure. but i don't think it needs a bigger pot I'm, i've I'm, seen I'm, them i'm always thinking something needs you know after a certain amount of time you know more room to spread well, out but i mean obviously if you want to give it more room it'll probably take more room but like i say you just take it out divide it and replant it and then well, share, there, share the one that you cut off there are dwarf cannas mm -hmm. which are great in containers forever yeah. but this one does get to be six to eight feet right so wow. it's possible in a small pot that you'd have it blowing over all the time once it got to be top heavy. Sure. Yeah. But you'll okay, have well to that's see. something to think about. Gotta play it by ear, Brian. See what happens. I will do that. What else? Uh, it looks so like fall bulbs are it looks like fall bulbs are getting the win here. Wow. Yeah. Fall so bulbs. Fall bulbs. That's that's tough to say five times really fast. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try. Yeah. So uh, so far, fall bulbs looks like the uh, the podcast for today. But again, we'll still we'll still cover watering at some point in time. Uh, during a future podcast as well, because there's a lot to talk about. I noticed that my brother Dave had joined Facebook, and he how's, sent how's Tomato Dave doing? Well, he sent me another email with a picture of a two and a half gallon Ziploc bag loaded with tomatoes that he had pulled off his. Oh, plant. he's having a feast, and it's just. He's just growing it on his patio like you are. How are your tomatoes doing? We, you haven't mentioned them lately. Did okay. Not a great year. We were able to harvest some. Hmm. Some we, didn't, we I didn't get to in time because of uh, critters. You didn't have the – I was going to say, did you have the same problem Tiger did with yeah. rats eating? Rats. Oh, yeah. 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 I had a bear come through there one, one night. It's rough where I live. Yeah. I, I was – somewhere on the Internet I was reading a uh, – it was either a Twitter post or a Facebook post where a package off at someone's house and 
they ended up not doing it and just left a note, a three-word note that said bear in driveway. <laughs> bear in driveway. Yeah. yeah. Come get your package. <laughs> That's yeah. right. <laughs> so we're, we're not dropping it off. Yeah. Um, and that's because of encroachment. Yeah. <laughs> what did I just – I was just thinking of something, and then you distracted oh, me I'm with sorry, Bear I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, John distracted me with Bear in Driveway. Oh, man. Oh, so Veggie Pod, because Brian has yes. a Veggie Pod I was yes. thinking about, and you were talking about the critters. I have a friend that has a Veggie Pod, and she's growing squash in it and i'm like what? what are you what are you doing and she's like yeah you know they're just growing and they're flowering and they're producing squash i'm like aren't they just filling up that whole, whole thing. thing like in general she's like yeah they're kind of growing on the walls and everything i'm like yeah, yeah there's no room in there but i don't know she's growing squash in it i i don't well, there know. are some smaller squash no this is not one i've seen like it. zucchini yeah exactly <laughs> i'm amazed so you know i mean if you need to protect your garden and you want something, the veggie pot is good, and you can grow a lot in there. It's amazing. But you know, zucchini is one of the few vegetables that you wish that, you know, critters would come and eat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they always talk about people putting zucchini in bags and leaving it on a neighbor's porch and ringing the doorbell and running away. <laughs> That uh, it's definitely prolific. That's why my favorite zucchini, we've talked about this many times, especially when Sharon used to be here, but the variety called Costata Romanesco, it does it produces a lot of male flowers, and it's the one in Italy that you've seen uh, the flowers and vegetable produce stands, just the flowers for sale, because they fry the flowers, they you know, dip them in egg and and breadcrumbs, and then fry them. Great name, Costata Romanesco. Costata Romanesco. Do you know what Costata is? Yeah, ribbed. Ribbed? Ribbed. And it, it's probably the meatiest of all the, the uh, squash, all the zucchinis, anyway. We are coming right back, uh, 45 minutes after the hour. Brian Maine, John Begnasco, Tiger Palafox. Again, thank you for uh, spending part of your Labor Day weekend with us, watching on Facebook Live and, of course, uh, Biz Talk Radio. John at GardenAmerica.com, 855-424-9825, or questions, comments, right there on Facebook Live. Everything is coming up roses in San Diego from October 25th to 29th. Lance Walheim here, and I'm honored to be the keynote speaker at the National Convention of the American Rose Society. BioAdvance and Heirloom Roses will be co-sponsoring the 18th annual Save the Roses auction. at the San Diego Crown Plaza Hotel and Convention Center and go to GardenAmerica.com and check the homepage for links to registration and event schedule. Having bug problems this season? Need an overall solution? Try Natural Guard Spinosad Soap. This combination of acid and fatty acids kills aphids, mealybugs, worms, caterpillars, and other bugs that plague your garden. It's also safe to use around your fruit and veggies to make sure you enjoy your crop and not those pesky critters. Find Natural Guard Spinosad Soap in a ready-to-use bottle or ready to spray for those large garden plots at your favorite independent garden center. Go to Fertilome.com for more information. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more? When you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-521-9579 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy. Easy and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-521-9579 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-521-9579. That's 1-800-521-9579. Again, 1-800-521-9579. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? 
we can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-569-3414. That's 800-569-3414. Again, 800-569-3414. Are you ready to leave your corporate job behind and be your own boss? Have you ever dreamed of owning a business? Do you have $50,000 or more sitting around in a 401k? If you answered yes, it's time to invest it yourself by buying or starting a business or franchise. IRS code allows you to use money in a 401k to invest in a business with absolutely no penalties or taxes. At Guided Financial, we've helped more than 11,000 entrepreneurs invest $3 billion in retirement assets into the small businesses and franchises of their dreams. So if you've got $50,000 or more in a 401k and you're looking for a way to start a business, call Guidant Financial now for free information and to learn more. Operators are standing by for your call. 800-570-6630. 800-570-6630. 800-570-6630. That's 800-570-6630. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Then call Page Publishing at 800 557 6095 immediately. That's 800 557 6095. Page Publishing is looking for authors of all types of books. And unlike most publishers, Page Publishing will take the time to review each and every book submitted to them and give you their feedback. If they like what they read, they'll get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, the Apple iTunes Store, Barnes and Noble, and other outlets. They handle everything editing, cover design, copyright protection printing, publicity, and distribution. So if you've written a novel, children's book, cookbook, inspirational work, poetry, or a biography and want to get it published, then you need to call Page Publishing and do it immediately. Call 800-557-6095 now for your free author submission kit. Again, for your free author submission kit, call 800-557-6095. That's 800-557-6095. Your road to fame and fortune could very well start with this simple phone call. Call Page Publishing at 800-557-6095 for your your free author submission kit. Biz Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Garden America Radio Show. John and Tiger. The phone lines are open right now at 855-424-9825. That's 855- 424-9825 or john at gardenamerica.com and just like that it is our uh, final segment uh, we had the poll question out uh, prior segment what should we talk about today on the podcast uh watering or fall bulbs and john who won the winner bulbs fall bulbs no one wanted to talk about water about watering. <laughs> so hey, that's somebody mentioned watering their citrus trees yeah they did so that's going to be our topic on our podcast today which we'll upload on Tuesday, at some point, we will talk about watering or maybe talk about watering uh, within the topic of another subject. Let's go to the phones, though, at 855-424-9825 as Marilyn is standing by on this Saturday morning, Labor Day weekend. Hi, Marilyn. Welcome to the show. How can we help you? Thank you. I um, have several – oh, I'm hearing an echo. Oh, you are? We got that echo problem going? Yes. Oh, boy. Now, see if you can make your question – through the echo. Okay. We don't uh, hear it, but my, I I'll, apologize for it. I'll ask my questions and then I'll listen for your answer. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. I have I have the kale from oh boy, Sharon, and it's quite pale. Uh-huh. So is that okay? Yes. And does Garden America have plants for sale now? And do beet seeds take a long time to germinate? And um, my tomatoes uh, are doing really well that I ordered. <laughs> so those are my questions. All right. That I'm hearing twice. <laughs> All right. We'll, we will try to answer them. If you want to hang up, maybe it would be easier for you. Um, oh, 
I don't have an echo from you, oh. from myself. Oh, great, great. Okay, well, then you can listen to my answer. Uh, we don't have any kale available now. We won't have any until next spring. It would have been nice to have some in the fall, but too much work for me. <laughs> so we don't uh, have any. I have Sharon's kale. Yes. And, and it's real pale. Yeah, that's the variegated one, right? No. Cosmic kale? Oh, it's not the cosmic kale. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sh I'm not sure, but anyway, if the kale is variegated, there there's nothing to worry about, but if it's a green kale that has a uh a light color to it, if you just use a water soluble food on it, that will take care of it. Uh you can pour it right on the leaves if you're using an organic and you don't have to worry about eating it. Beet seeds do take right. a, a little bit of time to germinate. And I almost the same amount of time as carrots. And so when I plant beets or carrots in a row, I always put a few radish seeds in there because they're up in two or three days. And that will help you remember where the row is while the others are germinating. Right. And then uh, what was the thing? Oh, the tomatoes are doing really well. And yeah, there was one are. more question, right? Your final question oh, was, uh, Garden America Marilyn? Does have any plants? Yes, no plants now. Not, we're just in the process of planning everything for uh, next year. So okay. uh, probably be another... Prob we are trying to get that ghost... Rose yeah, that geisha dianth, and we are trying to get that for next spring. Okay. What about the sunrise sunset? How, what company does it come from? Comes from no one. It's a rose that that it's a rose I had been looking for for fifteen years, and we right. th we thought <laughs> it might be extinct, and I through a convoluted process. I one in a container that was mostly dead, and I'm trying to get it propagated. And if I do, we'll have one available in the auction for next year, but um, I don't think it's going to be something that will be re readily available for many years. Okay. But Thank you. May, may, I, may I give you a quote that I have? Yes, and just read it straight through without driving yourself crazy. I apologize again for the, the double the hearing great yourself. The use of light is to spend it for something that outlasts life by William James. Oh, you know him. The philosopher, yeah. sure. Well, that's a great quote, Marilyn. Thank you very much for that. Hey, uh, time-wise, we've got to run. Thank you so much, and hopefully we'll talk to you again Thanks. soon. Give us a call anytime. I, I'm you sorry. For your time. You got it. 855-424-9825. John at GardenAmerica.com. Did you want to uh, address Sue's question and see if you agree with the answer somebody gave her already? Yeah, definitely. So on our Facebook live feed, uh, Sue asked the question that she has a salvia that's planted in the ground and it's dying. Um, she thinks it could be root rot. And then Catherine had suggested, oh, you know, maybe to repot it in new soil, um, you know, which would be a good thing to do if it you know, was a root rot thing in a container because right. when soil, you know, is overwatered, it begins to rot and there's not a lot you can do to correct it. But Sue had mentioned, well, it's in the ground. And so the the, the issue with salvia is in the ground with, uh, if, if it's happening, it sounds like she has a few of them, but if it's happening to all of them across the board um, in her landscape, then, you know, yeah, you know, she needs to cut back on the watering, she needs to evaluate it. A lot of times, you know, as John mentioned earlier for a, a listener, that liquid kelp is a good thing to kind mm -hmm. of, you know, supercharge a plant maybe, into maybe getting HB out of a Maybe HB101, maybe a little HB101. HB101. If it's a root rot issue, you know, definitely that's what we recommend. But you know, depending on who Sue is, could also be you know, drying out. It could be extreme heat and 
you know, which is, you know, not always likely with salvias, but there are some salvias out there that are not as drought tolerant as other salvias. And people get confused because they have salvias as a whole spectrum of plants. Well, there are some bog salvias that live in very damp environments. And if it's a variety kind of more on that more wet, you know, spectrum, then some people underwater them during this time of year. They think, oh, it's salvia, you know, mm-hmm. it'll it'll be fine. But they could be underwatering it, and it could be dying out because we've had a long win- uh, a long period of time of high temperatures. And with that, that's going to do it for this week. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend. Thank you so much for tuning in watching us on Facebook Live. We are back next week. And for the rest of you listening and streaming via BizTalk Radio, thank you so much. We'll do it again next week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be safe. I'm Brian Main for John Bignaskill, Tiger Palafox. want to thank uh, Stephen, our studio coordinator and director this morning. Until next time, like I said, be safe and get growing America. Take care. See you next week.